at 249. You take that flat line, right? What about 48 and 270? Is that a top three round pick? I'd like to think it is, right? This guy has a track record. This guy's still young and improving. This is a guy that I'm willing to hitch my wagon to. Okay? Um, his 36 last year was quiet, right? At ADP 89, this guy is ranked behind Corey Kluber, Marcus Simeon, Josh Bell, Tommy Pham. I'm pretty confident. I'd stake my flag into him outperforming all of those players. He doesn't, my, my point, he could be a top third round pick next year. He probably, I, I would, I'm pretty confident he'll be a higher pick than what he is this year, next year. Just based on statistics and trends alone. Does that make sense to you guys? What do you guys think? Give me some thoughts. Let's take a break here. We're at the half half hour mark. Listen to Chappie on Chaps Fantasy Chat. I come to you from the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network at Lenny Melnick, Fan- Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports.com. I come to you on Tuesday nights at 7. I usually have a show with Arnie at 9 on Tuesdays as well. Chappie and Arnie, Arnie show. Oh, we're working on a team name. <laughs> but uh, I love doing this. It's fun. I appreciate y'all being in the chat room. Uh, George, Malpow, Patrick, Vic, Andrea, Lenny, Ed. Um, thank you guys for coming. Really appreciate, appreciate you giving me your time. So, Chapman at 89. What do you guys think, by the way? What do you guys think of my assessment? Am I am I making sense? Am I and am I too out of whack? And here's the great thing about this, right? Because I have all these ADPs recorded, we could come back in a month and we can see what's happened with these guys when it normalizes, right? We all know these are a little out of whack right now because it's really early on in the season. Nobody has any eyes on any games, but it's still helpful. Because if you really want Matt Olson, and you see that he's gone from a, whatever I said, a 70 ADP to a 50 ADP, you know you have to spend more than a 50 ADP because he's trending in that direction, right? Vladimir Guerrero. Guys, you all know I prefer Bo Bichette. Um, Boy, this kid has a bunch of talent. And I just couldn't bring it to myself to rank him in front of some of these more established players in front of him. Um, Goldschmidt, Abreu, Chapman, McConaughey, just right in front of him, right? In this category. Do I think he can do, do I think he can pass those guys? Absolutely. Do I think it's this year? I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. I, I I don't see him being a value at ADP 60. That's why I bump him down, right? So I know I'm not fighting that. That's And you know what? That's great. I, I, George is saying he'd take Mancini at his draft spo- spot before Abreu. Um, that's, I mean, like I said, it, it, it's it's a great perspective. It's good having good baseball minds in here talking about it. Because you get into this silo where you're just thinking, oh, everybody thinks like I think. Well, I'm at the age now where I know that no one thinks like I think. You know, and that, that's fine. I love that, right? Um, but I know that sometimes I could be my own worst enemy in that regard as well. So it, it, it's just an interesting, it's, it's good to talk about that perspective. Um, Gosh, you know, the thing about Vlad, 
People forget he's playing. He's just 21 years old this year. I may have Vlad a little low, guys. I'm looking at him. Two seven, okay, as a 20-year-old. 272, 15 homers, 69 RBIs, and 464 plate appearances as a 20-year-old. You got to think all those numbers go up. <laughs> George, I'm with you, buddy. I don't think like I do either. <laughs> um, I, I think having guys like Lourdes Gurriel and Bo Bichette around him will take a decent amount of pressure off of Vlad's development, and I think that's by design, right? I think... This time next year is when you want to jump on Vladimir Guerrero. I do think he hits you around 280. I think he hits you around 25 homers this year. But he's not there yet. He's not he's far he he's far from a polished player. I think he slots in as a DH. Um and he's just so stinking young, guys. I, again, you know, to your guys' point, having him ranked above Chapman, above Jose Abreu, um, I, I just don't agree with it. Okay, so I won't have a whole lot of shares. Goldschmidt of Vladimir Guerrero. I have him as an eighth-round pick. I know it'll go well before that. Um. I talk about a guy who I sneaked up into this group that I guess I got to justify a little bit, right? Let's talk about Josh Donaldson. And so for your guys' sake, you know, I've heard you guys talk about um, Mancini and who else were you guys talking about? Um, Remind me. So... Mancini versus Donaldson. Yes, Donaldson's 34 years old. But we're talking about an MVP, right? As a 29-year-old, 41 homers, a 297 batting average, and 123 RBIs to go along with 122 runs. That's the perspective I'm looking at. Now, I know he's probably not going to replicate that in Minnesota. I understand that. I don't think he needs to, to be ranked at 101 and be a value. He had 37 homers last year, guys, with a two fifty nine average as a 33-year-old. I, going into last year, I was really concerned about his ability to stay healthy. He played 155 games last year, guys. Now, you move him to Minnesota, where he could DH if he's tired. He could play 162 games this year if he wanted to. He could DH if he doesn't feel like playing the field. But rest assured, he's going to be at that third base spot damn near every day. This will be his second full year being completely healthy. I look for 259 to go up. I look for 37 to hold still. Guys, that 94 RBIs could turn into about 120 in that lineup. I love Josh Donald at 101.7. That is our our third tier of corner infielders. What do you guys think? Do you put him in that group? Now before you answer, let's talk about this next group of folks. And Mal Pal, you're going to continue to be mad at me because your boy's not in here. <laughs> Josh Bell at 22, 
has an ADP of 79.3. Jeff McNeil at 98.3. Mike Moustakis at 109. Reese Hoskins at 105.3. Eduardo Escobar at 99.3. And Danny Santana. At 135, I snuck up into this group. Now, you guys probably think I'm crazy for doing that. And I know, I know he's going to be playing in center field this year. Let's talk about him. I got a couple other guys I want to talk about. We're going to talk about Danny Santana, okay? But first, I want to talk about Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil is one of these guys. When you're filling out your team, if you've had to take chances on guys that can have a low batting average, Jeff McNeil is the great evener, right? Because he's not going to hurt you. And all the other categories, he doesn't steal much many bases. But where he really helps you, he had 318 last year, guys. This is a great supplement to a guy like Joey Votto. To a guy, although I like Votto. That's maybe not the best example. To a guy who's gonna hit you a lot of homers with a low average. Now, Santana's. Excuse me. I keep wanting to go to Santana. I'm not going there yet. I got a couple other guys I want to talk about. What I like about McNeil, he gives you elite batting average. (laughs) He gives you elite batting average. He gives you serviceable power. And you can play him all over the field. Okay? Um... He played 37 games at second base. He played 31 games at third. He played 71 in left, and he played 42 in right. So, if you're in one of those, if you're one of those leagues like I am that breaks down the outfield positions, he could in essence play six positions, and that's really valuable when you're talking about covering for injuries. Obviously, at 98.3, you're not drafting him as a bench player. But you can use him in a lot of different capabilities, right? I actually think Jeff McNeil at 98 is a good value. I'm looking for him to drop, though, because people are going to take the opposite viewpoint of that. People are going to think, well, he's not real great at homers. He's not going to steal you any bases. So... You can turn this however you want to turn it. I'll take 318 out of my corner infielder every day. I'll take 318 out of my out my fourth or fifth outfielder every day. It's value, right? The next guy I want to talk about from this group is the Moose. At 109. This guy was pretty damn good last year. And believe it or not, I think he's he's in a better position this year with the team around him to put up some what to best some really good numbers from last year, right? So you're talking about a nine year pro, a career two fifty two hitter. Last year he had 254, but he had 35 homers and 87 RBIs in 143 games. I would think that's about where you'd expect him this year. In Cincinnati, that ball in the summer flies 